everybody. My name is Eli. I'm Nicole. I'm Caden. And I'm Jaden. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah YouTube channel. We are so glad you're here with us tonight. We know your time is valuable. We'll make this as brief and understandable as possible. Thank you very much. Yes, that is correct. We'll make this very brief as possible. Jason will be with us momentarily. And we are, we left off on 47. That's where we'll be starting tonight. A little bit of a recap of what happened was that the brothers of Joseph, after they had thrown him in the well, Joseph became a uh, a slave, he became, he went to jail, and now he's like one of the rulers. He is second to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And he has basically t brought his family down. He's got all this food for them. There's a famine in the land, and that is where we're at. So we hope that you guys are enjoying this series, that you guys are following along, hoping that you are spending time with your family reading this. And Eli is going to read the first chapter. All right, then it's Genesis 47. Then Yosef came and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brethren and their flocks, and their herds, and all that they have, are come out of the land of Canaan. And, behold, they are in the land of Goshen. And he took some of his brethren, even five men, and presented them unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto his brethren, What is your occupation? And they said unto Pharaoh, Your servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. They said moreover unto Pharaoh, For to sojourn in the land are we come, for your servants have no pasture for their flocks. For the famine is sore in the land of Canaan. Now therefore, we pray you, let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. And Pharaoh spoke unto El Yosef, saying, Your father and your brethren are come unto you. The land of Mitzrayim is before you. In the best of the land make your father and brethren to dwell. In the land of Goshen let them dwell. And if you and if you know any men of activity among them, then make them rulers over my cattle. All right, so right there we get Pharaoh. Right, he's talking to Joseph and his brothers, and they're like those shepherds. And apparently, that's a that's an evil sight in the eyes of the Egyptians. It could be religious reasons. We don't know. If anybody knows in the comments, please let us know. But uh, Pharaoh says to Joseph, if you know any of your brothers, any of your men that are able to watch my herds as well, so they also get another job base and they get all the land in Goshen which is perfect for feeding cows and pastures and uh, Pharaoh gave them another job gave them something good to do verse 7 and Joseph brought in Yaakov his father and set him before Pharaoh and Yaakov blessed Pharaoh and Pharaoh said unto El Yaakov how old are you and Yaakov said unto Pharaoh the days of the years of my pilgrimage are a hundred and thirty years Few and evil day have the days of the years of my life been, and have not attained unto the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage. And Yaakov blessed Pharaoh, and went out from before Pharaoh. And Yosef placed his father and his brethren, and gave them a possession in the land of Mitzrayim, in the best of land, in the land of Ra Ram Kek, as Pharaoh had commanded. And Ram Kek is Ramses. And Joseph nourished his father and his brethren, and all his father's household, with bread, according to their families. And there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore. So the land of Mitzrayim and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Mitzrayim, and in the land of Canaan, for the grain which they had bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when money failed in the land of Mitzrayim, and in the land of Canaan, all the midstream came unto El Yosef, and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in your presence? For the money fails. And Joseph said, Give your cattle, and I will give you for your cattle, if money fail. And they brought their cattle unto El Yosef, and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses, and for the flocks, and for the cattle of the herds, and for the asses. And he fed them with bread for all their cattle that uh, for that year. All right, so... What happens here is everyone there is no money left. There is they have they are they are down to no money, and then they're like, please, we need food. We have no food left, and they give up their possession. They start with their cat, their uh, cattle, and they go to their, like their lands, and then they go to their they become slaves. So these people sell everything they have down to the point where they sell themselves as slaves because they are so hungry and they have no food left. When that year was ended, they came unto him the second year and said unto him. We will not hide it from my Adoni, how that our money is spent. My El Adonai has also our herds for cattle. There is not aught left in the sight of my Adonai, but our bodies and our lands. Wherefore shall we die before your eyes, both we and our land? Buy us our land for bread, and we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh. And give us seed, that we may live, and not die, that the land be not desolate. 
And Joseph bought all the land of Mitzrayim for Pharaoh, for the Mitzrayim sold every man his field, because the famine prevailed over them, so the land became Pharaoh's. And as for the people, he removed them to cities, from one end of the borders of Mitzrayim, even to the other end thereof. Only the land of the priests bought he not, for the priests had a portion to sign them of Pharaoh, and did eat their portion which Pharaoh gave them, wherefore they sold not their lands. Then Joseph said unto the people, Behold, I have bought you this day in your land for Pharaoh. Lo, here is seed for you, and ye shall sow the land. And it came to pass in the increase that ye shall give the fifth part unto Pharaoh, and four parts shall be your own, for seed of the field, and for your food, and for them of your households, and for food for your little ones. And they said, You have saved our lives. Let us find grace in the sight of my own eye, and we shall be Pharaoh's servants. And Yosef made a law over the land of Mitzrayim unto this day, that Pharaoh should have the fifth part, except the land of the priests only, which became not Pharaoh's. So basically what happened there was, they get to the end and they're like, we have nothing left, take us and give us seed, we will become the servants, we will do anything that Pharaoh says basically. And he goes, okay, that's fine. So then Yosef uh, says, anything that you, when you plant it, when you grow it up, when it grows, you will give one fifth of it. And they will basically do a tithing to Pharaoh. Every single harvest they get, they get a tithing to Pharaoh. And it's a law to this day, as they said. Was there any commandments? There's no commandments so far. And Yashuel dwelt in the land of Mitzrayim, in the country of Goshen. And they had possessions therein, and grew, and multiplied exceedingly. And Yaakov lived in the land of Mitzrayim 17 years. So the whole age of Yaakov was 147 years, 40 and 7 years. And the time drew nigh that Yashrael must die, and he called his son Yosef, and said unto him, If now I have found grace in your sight, put, I pray you, your hand under my thigh, and deal kindly and truly with me. Bury me not, I pray you, in Mitzrayim, but I will lie with my fathers, and you shall carry me out of Mitzrayim, and bury me in their burying place. And he said, I will do as you have said. And he said, Swear unto me, and he swore unto him. And Yashrael bowed himself upon the bed, and said, all right, so there's no commands in that chapter. We are now on chapter 48. And it came to pass after these things that one told Yosef, Behold, your father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And one told Yaakov and said, Behold, your son Yosef comes unto you. And Yashrael strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. And Yaakov said unto El Yosef, El Shaddai appeared unto me at Luz in the land of Canaan, and blessed me, and said unto me, Behold, I will make you fruitful, and multiply you, and I will make you of you a multitude of people, and will give this land to your seed after you for an everlasting possession. And now your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto you in the land of Mitzrayim, before I came unto you, you in Mitzrayim, are mine, as Reuben and Shimon, they shall be mine. And your issue, which you beget after them, shall be yours, and shall be called after the name of their brethren and their inheritance. And as for me, when I came from Padna Ram, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan in the way. When yet there was but a little way to come in unto Ephrathah, and I buried her there in the way of Ephrathah, the same is Bethlehem. And Yashrael beheld Joseph's sons, and said, Who are these? And Joseph said unto his father, They are my sons, whom Elohim has given me in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray you, unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Yashrael were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and kissed them, and embraced them. And Yashrael said unto El Yosef, I had not thought to see your face, and, lo, Elohim has showed me also your seed. And Joseph brought them out of, from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Yashriel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Yashriel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. And Yashriel stretched out his hand and laid it upon Ephraim, stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hand whittlingly. For Manasseh was the firstborn. So what happened there was when he came out to bless him, he crossed his arms. He crossed his hands on this thing. Because I don't know if it's because he, the younger was blessed or he had seen a vision or he had been told this. But he crossed his hands to bless them differently. To bless the younger one 
more than the older one. Right. <clears throat> and hello, everyone. This sets up stuff for in the future as well, um, for when blessings are not given to the other kids and blessings are given to these kids. Okay, so where are we at, Nicole? Fifteen. Fifteen. And he blessed Joseph and said, Elohim, before whom my fathers Avram and Yitzhak did walk, the Elohim which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads and let my name be named on them and the name of my fathers Avram and Yitzhak and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put your right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, in you shall Yashrael bless, saying, Elohim, make you as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. And Yashrael said unto El Yosef, Behold, I die, but Elohim shall be with you and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to you one portion above your brother, which I took out of the hand of the Emery with my sword and with my bow. And the Amory is what? It's, it's Amorite. 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 So probably a patriotic yeah. from an onion. I think we actually read a lot about the war they had with the Amorites in Jasher. Yeah, so here we are. So we are getting towards the end of this. Does anyone have any commands or anything that Nothing you guys yet. have seen? Okay. So this is really, you know, this is, uh, the Christians have said this is really hard to do and nobody can keep the law, statutes, and commands. But to this thing, we've only found a whole total of four. Fifth. 14. Yeah, 14, almost 15. 14. Okay, so let's continue on. Let's, let's blast on through. 49. And Yaakov called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Yaakov, and hearken unto El Yashrael your father. Reuben, <laughs> this is where things are going to get a little wild. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. You're <laughs> unstable as water. You shall not excel because you went up to your father's bed, then defiled it. He went up to my couch. Like, he like explained this to everyone because I maybe don't know about this. Yeah, so if you guys don't know what's going on here, if you guys are just joining us, Jade, go ahead. Reuben, um, he well, it was going to be kind of like a concubine or something like that to Yisrael, Jacob, Jacob, and uh, he saw her bathing and then he went and lay with her. Yes. And so then Yaakov found out and he was very angry. Yes. And so uh, this yeah, is... Billa. Yeah, but it was Bill. Yeah, that was Bill. And so basically what you're seeing, you're seeing the end of a generation and a passing of... Well, this is a curse. There's a curses and there's blessings. And so Reuben got a what? Uh, like a curse. curse yeah. He was yeah. unstable. I mean, he basically just threw him under the bus. So he's not going nowhere. He's going to no. like be unsuccessful his entire life. Yep. Bus ride. And he probably did this in front of the entire family, so you're probably sitting there looking at the ground, kicking the dust as you're getting smoted by pops. <laughs> okay, Shimeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. Does anyone remember why they, these guys are considered cruelty? Because they killed the uh, Shechem. King and they killed the entire thing of Shechem, Shechem for finding but, Dinah. Yeah, and when, also, when they were in pain. Wasn't there something with animals or something else There was with these guys? There was something There's funky. something in Jasher. I don't remember, but... <clears throat> but Verse black. 6. O my soul, come not into their secret, unto their assembly. My honor be not united. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dug down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Yaakov and scatter them in Yashrael. All right, so is that, uh, does that sound good or bad? I mean, technically, this, this is kind of like uh, Levi got scattered through all Yashrael. He didn't have a portion, but they were everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, but Levi ends up being. I mean, all They're of these priests. guys end up becoming like super. It's like heads of the tribes, but I mean, they're all getting smoted. At the yeah, they can't feel good as they're hearing these last words of their father. This can't be a good thing to hear. No, verse eight, Yahuda, you are he whom your brethren shall praise. Your hand shall be in the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Yahuda is a lion's whelp from the prey. My son, you are gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion and as an old lion who shall rouse him up 
The scepter shall not depart from Yahuda, nor a Torah giver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the be shall the gathering of the people be. So what does this mean here? It says Shiloh, and so it's tranquil. What what is this talking about Yahuda? What is what is with Yahuda? Basically, he's saying that a king will rise from him, like generations of kings will rise from him. Who, ri who rises? Out well, of you this? got. It starts with uh, the like when you start hearing about kings, you hear of King David, but it's actually Yeshua. He's talking like he knows. He apparent. You can tell he's seen like futuristic events. He's seen the salvation of the people, so he knows what blessings are going where. The why he says it because if anything, Judah should probably be the most cursed. He's the one that had the idea to throw Joseph in the well. So I think all of these ancients were told of Messiah Yahushua. I think they were all, they all knew the plan. They were not there. That's what it says in Hebrews. It says that all the ancients knew and they, they were not able to keep the promise, but they were able to see it. it not, they weren't able to hang around with fulfillment, but it was, it was, they saw it. So Yahuda is, is who, I mean, he didn't curse Yahuda. He, no. he um, and Yahuda is, is who, I, I, if you were a tribe, I mean, what are the qualities and characteristics of Yahuda? Yahuda, they're warriors. They're, Violence. They're the soldiers that protect you. When anyone asks, like, what we can do, who's going to protect us? Yahoo always said, Yahuda will go up and they will protect you. They will be the ones that will fight for you. Yeah, so if it's like the U.S. military, like when you when they first go invade somebody, they throw in the Marines. The Marines are always the first dudes to go in. Yahuda's the first guys that always go in there and get the job done and then um, roll it, roll it in. Okay. Um, 11. 11. Binding his foal into the vine and his ass's colt into the choice vine, he washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Anyone have any idea what this means here? I don't know. I have no idea what that means. Yeah, I don't know. Some internal family stuff. No, so, there's references in mind to Isaiah, Ezekiel, and Revelations. Uh, does it actually give you verses? Yeah. What does it say? Isaiah 63, 1 through 3. And? And then Zechariah Zachari 9, 9, 9 and Revelation 19, 19, 11 through 16. Okay, yeah, so anybody wants to look those up, um, that has references to what is going down there. Verse 12, his eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. Zebulun shall dwell at the haven of the sea, and he shall be for a haven of ships, and his border shall be unto Zidon. Yissachar is a strong ass couching down between the two burdens. That just sounds really strange. Verse 15, and he saw that rest was good, and the land that was pleasant and bad. What does it say? Does it say the donkeys? It says, are yeah, who is says a don strong donkey lying down between two burdens? I don't know why it says this. A strong bone donkey crouching down between the sheepfolds. I just because described. I don't think it was vulgar back when they did it. No, I think no, we've just, just made it vulgar down these days, and so it's like makes us immature. So here we are. Yep. We're trying to do this. Okay, so we got the donkey couching down between two burdens. So he says this about Yisagar. Does anyone have any idea? What's your I don't, never really saying? heard yeah, much about Yisakar. Even in Jasher, Yisakar was like one of the most unknown ones. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is some internal family stuff. We don't know exactly what he's saying here. I'm sure some other folks do, but we don't. And he saw that rest was good and the land that it was pleasant and bowed his shoulder to bear and became a servant unto tribute. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Yashrael. Dan shall be a serpent by the way and adder in the path that bites the horse heel so that his rider shall fall backward. I have waited for your Yeshua, O Yahuwah. So this is where we hear, you know, the the, the name of our Messiah is, is Yahushua, Yeshua, right? It's something very close to this, Yeshua. Something saved, deliverance, hence aid, victory, prosperity, deliverance. So it always talks about the salvation of, which is Yeshua, by O Yahuwah. And, and your guys' version, what's it say? It says, I have waited for your deliverance, O Yahuwah. And salvation is in the calls. I have waited for your salvation. Yeah, so um, salvation came in the name of Yahu Yahushua. Okay, verse 19. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Out of Asher, his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. Naphtali is a hind let loose. He gives goodly words. Yosef is a fruit bow, even a fruitful bow by a well, whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. So the archers, is that his brothers, possibly? Uh, maybe, maybe he went to like, war with Egypt. Joseph? Yeah, maybe in Egypt. Maybe, I don't know. 
I think this is more of a thing like all those that were against him and he still overcame what was against him. Yeah, this is some pretty crazy stuff. So he's, he's talking about here. I wonder if they knew what he was talking about through all those. I'm sure they did. They were all in these family feuds. But his bow abode in strength and the arms of his hand were made strong by the hands of the mighty Elohim of Yaakov. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Yashrael. Even by the Elohim of your father, who shall help you, and by El Shaddai, who shall bless you with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lies under, blessings of the breast and of the womb. The blessings of your father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors. What does your say? 26. It what? says, the blessings of the ancestors of your father have prevailed among the blessings of my what? Blessings of... Hold on. Forefathers. Yeah, Forefathers. Yeah, ancestors. Proge progeners. Ancestors, yeah. All right, this one's progenitors. Progenitors. Until the utmost bound of the everlasting hills, they shall be on the head of Yosef and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. Binyamin shall raven as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. All these are the twelve tribes of Yashrael, and this is it that their father spoke unto them, and blessed them. <laughs> Everyone according to his blessing, he blessed them. And he charged them and said unto them, I am to be gathered into my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron, the Chitti, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre in the land of Canaan, which Ephron brought with the field of Ephron, the Chitti, for a possession of a burying place. There they buried Avram and Sarah, his woman, and they buried Yitchak and Rivka, his woman, and there I buried Leah. The purchase of the field and the cave that is therein was from the children of Keth. And when Yaakov had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up his ruach and was gathered unto his people. Okay. Um, anyone have anything? No commands. No, no commands. It's a anything? blessing. I'm not sure those are all blessings. No, I feel like most of them walked away feeling pretty cursed. Well, yeah. And the, uh, I guess I guess that was quite the thing. I don't know what kind of timeline that was. I mean, if you just blessed him and like rolled up his bed and died. Yeah, I, I think he might have been, maybe, I don't think he would have just rolled over and died like that. I think it would have been a, just a little more time. really dramatic, huh? Yeah. Like, all right, you're all cursed. Goodbye. Yeah, on my way out. Okay, <clears throat> this is it. This is the last chapter of Genesis, and that is that is one book of the Torah that we have um, been as Bereans and searched the scriptures of Bereans, trying to, to find these, and so we will continue on. Okay, and Yosef fell upon his father's face and wept upon him and kissed him. And Yosef commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father, and the physicians embalmed Yashrael. And 40 days were fulfilled for him. What, what 40 days? What are you talking about? I think mourning. Mourning. Let the dead bury the dead. And I think that's what Messiah was talking about. It's like the guy that was supposed to follow him. If he wanted somebody died in the family, well, they had 40 days of mourning and burials and all this stuff. And Yahushua said, let the dead bury the dead. And so 40 days were fulfilled for him. For so are fulfilled the days of which are embalmed. And the Mitzrayim mourned for him three score and ten days. So 40 days. 70 days. Oh, 70. Yeah, two, four, yeah, 70 days. Okay. And when the days, thank you, Nicole. And when the days of his mourning were past, Yosef spoke into the house of Pharaoh, saying, if, if now I have found grace in your eyes, speak, I pray you, in the ears of Pharaoh, saying, my father made me swear, saying, Lo, I die in my grave, which I have dug for me in the land of Canaan. There shall you bury me. Now, therefore, let me go up, I pray you, and bury my father, and I will come again. And Pharaoh said, Go up and bury your father, according as he made you swear. And Yosef went up to bury his father, and with him up all the servants of Pharaoh, and elders, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Mitzrayim. And all the house of Yosef, and his brethren, and his father's house, only their little ones, and their flocks, and their herds, they left in the land of Goshen. And there went up with him both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very large company. And they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond the Yardine. And there they mourned with a great and sore lamentation, and he made his mourning for his father seven days. And when the inhabitants of the land, the Kenanim, saw the mourning in the, mourning in the floor of Atad, they said, This is a grievous mourning to the Mitzrayim. Wherefore, the name of it was called Avel Mitzrayim, which is beyond the Yardine. And what is Yardine, guys? Garden. A garden. Yeah, Jardine, Jordan. Oh, this Go is on. the Jordan. This is, uh, so Yardine. Jardine. That's, That's probably in Spanish. I just totally in. smoted this. Yeah, Yardine is Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so Jordan. So Yardin is Jordan. Okay. Fail. 
verse 12. And his sons did unto him according as he commanded them. For his sons carried him into the land of Canaan and buried him in, a, in the cave of the field of Machpelah, which Abraham bought with the field for a possession of a burying place of Ephraim, the Chitti, before Mamre. And Yosef returned into Mitzram, he and his brethren, and all that went up with him to bury his father after he had buried his father. And when Yosef's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Yosef will perchance hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto El Yosef, saying, Your father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Yosef, Forgive, I pray you now, the transgression of your brethren and their sin, for they did unto you evil. And now we pray you, forgive the transgression of the servants of the Elohi of your father. And Yosef wept when they spoke unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we will be your servants. And Yosef said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of Elohim? But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but Elohim meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones, and be comforted them, and spoke kindly unto them. And Yosef dwelt in Mitzrayim, he and his father's house, and Yosef lived a hundred and ten years. And Yosef saw Ephraim's children of the third generation, the children also of Machimir. And who's that? Machir. Machir. The son of Manasseh. It's a salesman. Machir, a Yeshua, son of Manasseh. Could have sung grain, I guess. Yeah. Machir, the son of Manasseh, who brought up upon Yosef's knees. And Yosef said unto his brethren, I die, and Elohim will surely visit you, and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swore to Abram, to Yitzhak, and to Yaakov. And Yosef took an oath of the children of Yashrael, saying, Elohim will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from hence. So Yosef died, being a hundred and ten years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Mitzrayim. All right, gentlemen, <clears throat> that is the end of that. And for everybody who's uh, looking into this, there's 50 chapters of Genesis or Bereshith. And I guess that is it. Um... The laws, statutes, and commands are good for all times. I don't believe they have been put anywhere. I believe they are good for us till the end of time. And it will strengthen your family. It will strengthen everything about you guys. And um, it will be blessings. Blessings do come from the Shamaim. They come from Yah. He has given us things. And the people of old, all the old people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jeoch, Elf, they were attributed in the, in the New Testament or the new new covenant new not the new covenant but the New Testament style stuff in Hebrews is specifically as being faithful as having faith and and showing that and knowing that Yah will deliver us and as we get into these dark days into where it seems like great evil is amongst everybody we must believe that he will deliver us and deliver you and he will he is faithful to us and he will be faithful to you like he has said so guys keep your uh, nose in the book um, if you guys have any questions, you know where to post them. We thank you guys very much for being part of our digital family. And for everybody that made it through this whole thing, we thank you guys very much. And have a good night. All right. All right shalom. shalom. See you in Exodus. Bye, everyone.